Welcome to episode 36 of Squib Kick Radio. I'm your host, as always, Elias Powell, and I am joined here with both Riley Pollock and Harry Burton. How are you doing, boys? I'm doing really well. It's, uh, it's been a good week so far. It's nice and hot here in Calgary, finally. Today was our first day over 30 all summer long, so sat out on the deck and wrote our script. And, uh, yeah, it's been good. Been working lots and ready to talk some football and uh, wind down a little bit here. I am fresh off my trip to Langham, Saskatchewan, where I became a local egg expert. I am feeling fantastic. Like is... agriculture or eggs from chickens? Well, eggs from chickens don't exist, but agriculture is a thing. Sorry, uh, hens. What? Oh, hens. <laughs> oh, there we go. I was going to say, we're going to need some clarification there. Um, some, all right. Some, some steels and some cattle. Well, and... Yeah. Educating you on agriculture throughout the world here Scotch. on Squid <laughs> Kick Radio. Uh, we've got a lot to get to. We have another week finished with the CFL. We've got a little bit of controversy, you could say, surrounding a certain mascot, which is always Actually, I can't even say it's always interesting. It never happens, so it's actually pretty ridiculous, but we'll get to that. Uh, we also actually have some decent NFL news. Again, it seems like we've got back-to-back weeks where we actually have some news to report on as players are getting ready to go to camp. And we also have, of course, Riley's pick summary. We'll find out how he did. But in regular fashion here on Squib Kick Radio, we are going to start with our CFL recap from week six. Riley, lots was going on this past week. Why don't we start out in Calgary and Toronto? Yeah, it was uh, kind of a trap game for the Stamps, I think. They are playing Toronto, who isn't very good. Uh, They beat the Argos 26-16, but they could have won by a lot more. They had four interceptions and seven total turnovers. But Nick Arbuckle and the offense for the Stamps just couldn't really get it going when they wanted to. Um, with Bo out at least two or three more weeks, he was in LA today getting a cortisone shot in his shoulder so that he can start practicing soon, but still looking like Bo's out for another at least two weeks. Uh, Nick Arbuckle's got to step it up a little bit here because I've seen some flashes from him, but, uh, he threw some ugly interceptions yes or last week, um, a pick in the end zone that should never have been thrown. So Calgary, I don't think is as convinced that they have their future starter, as they were when Bo went down. So uh, Stamps win, but uh, should have been by a lot more. Yeah, he's yeah. no Fajardo, for sure. <laughs> Harry's Definitely favorite not. player. And I would agree, concerning in Calgary, but at the same time, not that bad. It's going to be pretty rare that Bo goes down with this type of injury, I would assume. He doesn't really have a huge history of nagging shoulder injuries, so they'll probably get him right as rain and get him back on the field for a prolonged period of time, having just signed that big contract with Calgary this past offseason. Moving on to Winnipeg, they absolutely obliterated, obliterated Ottawa Riley. Yeah, it was an absolute beatdown in Winnipeg, 31-1. to Jonathan Jennings, the quarterback that I've been making fun of for the past two weeks, was awful in the game. He just could not throw the ball to save his life, as is usual for him. He was 6 of 15 for 45 yards and an interception in just over a half of play. Jonathan Jennings just cannot read his own defense. I don't know how many times I have to say it. He's not a good quarterback. He had one good year. He needs to be out of the CFL, but uh, I'm okay with Ottawa keeping him around if they want to keep chalking these L's up because uh, they might be that team that the Riders or the Lions have to pass for a crossover later in the season. So keep on losing, Ottawa. Uh, We love it. Dom Davis, your boy, Eli, about a week out still. He's not going to play this week against the Stamps, so it will be Jennings starting again. Uh, That spells bad news for the Red Blacks, who look to lose their uh, fourth in a row, I believe. Not looking good in Ottawa after a decent start. No, definitely not. And this team looked actually quite promising. A bit of a dark horse, even, if you will, with Dominique Davis coming in and looking quite incredible earlier in the season. But a bit of an injury. You you hope that he will get back to his form that he had a couple weeks ago with some time off because 
you'd assume that this injury has been nagging him for a little bit. Now he's finally out. So it'll be interesting to see how Ottawa rebounds after that. As for Winnipeg, this team is good. Yeah, 5-0, and first time since 1960. Yeah. It's, I'm just looking forward to Labor Day. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah, so, sto- so stoked for them. So yeah, yeah, we're really yeah. happy here at Squib Kick for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. But they're doing all this without Adam Big Hill. Maybe their best defensive player has been hurt for the past three weeks, and they're still crushing everybody. It uh, It's just a good time to be a Bombers fan, but uh, we all know they're going to blow it in the playoffs, right, guys? Yes. Yeah, and even in the good times, being a Bombers fan, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. some, like, side news, like... Apparently, Chris Matthews suffered a puncture wound, they're calling it. It was initially reported as a stabbing. The receiver for the Bombers was at a restaurant and then suffered some sort of puncture wound over the weekend, but he was back at practice on Monday, so it couldn't have been that big of a deal, but uh, good old Winnipeg. Well, Must have glad, been a fork. Glad he's Must okay. Have been a fork. Yeah, and that's the jokes are just too easy there, so I'm, I just won't <laughs> even... Yeah, it's. I'm glad he's okay as well. I mean, you don't wish any injuries on anybody, even if they do play for the Bombers. That's right. But you do got to be careful with forks as they are considered sharp objects. Yeah. <laughs> uh, moving on to Montreal and Edmonton. Where did this team come from, Eli? Um, I don't know. Ugh, the I think all they needed, they just needed me to, to believe in them. Yeah. Like, they're trying their best and they're picking up W's. And they needed Cavus Reed to get as far away from the team as possible, and now they've won three in a row. So uh, three straight wins. They beat the Esks, who have looked really good this season, 20-10. to 10. Montreal's defense was absolutely outstanding. Stanback and Vernon Adams did what they needed to do on offense again. And now they're in sole possession of second place in the East, just one game back of the Hamilton Tiger Cats, who have to play Winnipeg this week. So Montreal goes into the bye on a three-game winning streak, you almost don't want to go into the bye at this point, you know? I mean, they're on a heater right now. Now they have to sit a week out. But uh, I'm happy for this team. I uh, They've been in the dumps. Their, their attendance has been declining. This used to be the premier franchise of the CFL back when it was them and the Riders in the Grey Cups for a few years in a row. And uh, I'm happy to see them kind of get back to their winning ways. Yeah, it's yeah. weird, the sympathy that I have for them. Because in those days... Um... It was just, they just never stopped winning. And, yeah. Oh, like, Calvillo, like, greatest of all time. But, like, come on, man. Give yeah. us Give us a chance. Well, and we've mentioned this on the podcast before. That season opener, the, the first game after the Grey Cup 13th man loss was the greatest regular season game I've ever seen in my life. It was that 54-51 game where Montreal just kept coming back. The Riders won in double overtime, even though SJ Green made that stupid catch in the back of the end zone. That's like, I still remember that game clearly. That was one of my favorite games of all time. I mean, and then Montreal, Calville retired and they haven't been the same. They've been terrible ever since. I was so happy when he retired just because it gave everyone else a chance. But you really, it, it really just shows kind of like the weakness in the CFL when one team, especially one of the teams, in Ontario, starts to do awful, the the league really suffers. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, it's nice to see them back. But uh, I won't have any sympathy for them if they start beating the Durs in the playoffs again like they used to. Yeah, none. None. All right. Well, interesting. I, I'm just still surprised with that game. I thought Edmonton was a lock in that. So interesting to see Montreal picking up some momentum. Moving now to Saskatchewan, we had a big game from the Riders, didn't we, boys? Yeah, we did. About time they showed up for a game, and, uh, you know, they've been all right at home. I think, I believe they have both their wins at home this season, so uh, they grabbed a huge win. Thiggy with that huge kickoff return touchdown. I love Marcus Thigpen so much. Fajardo looked really comfortable in the pocket. Your boy, Harry, have you got his jersey yet? Fajardo? No, I have not. I have no. not. I'm You're still holding it. on to the Duran jersey just because I have to probably go one more season. Yeah, well, and every time you get a jersey, they leave. I mean, you had Corey Sheets, then yeah. you had Duran. Go I had get Ke- Fajardo. I had Ken and Keith first, too. KK. So, so th- those were tough times. Those were tough yeah, times. Yeah, he's a beauty. Um, 
How about Charleston Hughes, though? He was the number one player of the week in the CFL this week. Ten tackles, three sacks, two forced fumbles. He made Mike Riley his little boy all game long. They were chopping him. They couldn't block Charleston Hughes, so they chopped him like they were an offensive line from high school. It was embarrassing to see BC's line just get beat up by like a 35-year-old man like that. Um, He leads the league in sacks with eight. The next closest has four. So another great season for Charleston Hughes. Yeah, and the Riders just had a dominant performance. It's rare when you get a a huge kick return touchdown right before the half to to take that momentum. You're you're generally not going to lose those games. So it's definitely, definitely a good step in the right direction for the Saskatchewan Riders. As far as BC is concerned, they're just not good at football this year. No. This is pretty much a wash for them. Their O lineman their O line is an embarrassment and their defense is not very good either. They've got a good receiving core. They've got a pretty good running back. They've got probably the best quarterback in the CFL, but the O line just blows it for them and he can't do anything. I like have he's no still sympathy. threw no he still sympathy. threw for three hundred and forty six yards. But they yeah, just well, can't know, do anything. He could have been on our team. He could have been throwing those up for us. And he could have had an offensive line that could somewhat protect him at least. Well, would we have been able to pay the guys that we paid if we have to give him $750,000? He's over I, 10% of the cap. Yeah, you know what? If we have Mike Riley on the team, our team looks a lot better. Period. Like, Fajardo, I love you, buddy. But, like, you're not Mike Riley. And... Who do we even have that we're paying that much this year? Like, oh, no, we mm. can't sign John Ryan to a ridiculous punter's contract. Micah Johnson eating up triple teams in the middle. Uh, Zach Evans, I believe, we re-signed this year. I'm, Manny, I'm, Ars- Manny Arsenault. Again, I, I love John Ryan, but I come on. like we don't, we don't need to be paying a punter that much money. He's not, yeah. doing, he's not that good. Well, he's he averaged fifty-eight point eight yards per punt last year. Yeah, day. but he's not. He, but he's not accurate. He's not punting it at the two-yard line. No, he's putting it out the back of the end zone. Yeah, and it's. But he's pissed off about it too. <laughs> well, fair enough. And you know, he's a local Regina boy, so everyone's going to stick with him no matter what. But yeah, John Ryan can do no wrong in the football, eyes of Saskatchewan. I agree. I agree. Love the guy, Regina hero. But yeah, yeah. If it's a business and we're paying a punter. That much money? Come yeah. on. Harry, you were at the game. Uh, how, was the, how was the environment? We had the most, I think we had over 31,000 in seats that game, and it was the biggest crowd of the year. So a uh, good, good environment there? Yeah, it was, a, it was a good environment. I mean, there's, for some reason this year, well, I shouldn't say for some reason. Like, it's pretty obvious why the games aren't sold out. But it's, it's just different not seeing packed a packed house every game. It's weird yeah. seeing those open seats. Well, but... the thing is, is that the food's too expensive, the booze is too expensive, the tickets are too expensive, and the team isn't dominating like they used to from, you know, 07 to 2015. Uh, yeah, so there's... that's that's just going to be how it is. Uh, fair enough. But the, then they, as a business, need to start figuring something out. Edmonton just oh, yeah. in, just introduced if you're under 17 you can come to the game for free. Yeah, and there's $22 tickets and like hot dogs are like 250 and there's like 450 beers or something. Like yeah. all great things. But uh we got to we got to pay back that stadium somehow. So, you know, if it's only affordable to the top 50% of people in Regina and surrounding area. Uh, we'll see how she goes, but you know, yeah, I think it, I, there's no reason upper deck tickets shouldn't be like 25 bucks. Not a reason at all. And as soon as the riders have under 17 and gets in free, you will see me shaving before every game and getting <laughs> to every game for free. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I had a child ticket with my dad in season tickets until I was like 18. And then he upgraded me to teen yeah. until like, I'm pretty sure he still has a teen ticket. I know. My, my dad actually just did the same. He just upgraded one of the youths to an adult. <laughs> and I was like, wow, that's a... That's you a and your sister decision. have both been out of high school for, what, four years? Well, uh, she's yeah, been did. out for three years, four years. <laughs> I just turned 26. Been a bit longer than that. Yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you've been out for like eight. <laughs> but the, when, when I'm 50, I'll look good. Or that's what people yeah, say. Yeah, anyway. damn right. So I'm holding on to that. Um, yeah, happy birthday yesterday, by the way, Harry. Yes, actually, that's a great point. Happy Thank belated you. birthday to our own Harry Burton. Thanks, guys. 
Great to, uh, um, great to have good friends. And happy birthday to uh, host of the show, Elias Powell's mom, Pam Klein. If you're listening, out, Pam, Pam, happy birthday. I'll never forget your birthday. <laughs> uh, boys, we've got a, uh, a little bit of controversy, oh. you could say, here. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's Okay, so I'll give a background story to the people who've been living under a rock. Um, Gainer the gopher beats up a stuffed lion every single time the BC Lions come to Mosaic Stadium, Taylor Field, whatever you want to call it. Since we've been children, he's been beating up a stuffed lion. He drags it around with a noose sometimes. He cut that out, so, like, that's good. Positive direction. But some lady on Twitter started bitching that, like, oh, it's, like, cruelty against stuffed animals. And, like, honestly, I thought it was a joke at first, but she kept going on. And then Deron Carter started making fun of her. And, uh, like, it's embarrassing. Figure out something better to do with your life than to yell at a mascot about beating up a stuffed animal. It's stupid. It's a stuffed animal. Lady, figure it out. It's a stuffed animal. Stop yelling about it. And then people are piling on. There's not that many people that are saying it. I saw like four or five people on Twitter agreeing with her. But of course, like, Global runs with the story. Three Down Nation runs with the story. It's been talked about on the Rod Peterson show the past two days. It's just like a non-story. And people are so soft these days. Are you kidding me? A gopher beat up a stuffed lion? Get a grip. It's an embarrassment that this is even being talked about right now. Yeah, that's yeah. also, that's a gripe. That's a gripe to CFL media. They need to figure it out and go find a story that's real. I mean, a lady is upset that a mascot is beating up a lion, I guess. A I don't stuffed know. It's, lion. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's tough. Like, it's embarrassing for the lady. It's embarrassing for the people who are on their side. It's embarrassing for the news outlets that the fact that it's being want to cover it. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, stupid. If you want to cover that, I mean, we just had a uh, a pretty nice performance from Charleston Hughes that you could exactly. talk about. Exactly. Talk but, about the game. Yeah, but instead we got to focus on this line. I remember oh. being a child and here we are still talking being... about it though. It's it's apparently it's it's hitting that note for a lot of people where some people are feeling one way, some people are feeling the other. If it was really that big of a nothing issue, why are we still talking about it? That's my question. Like, well, because who cares? it's our job to talk about what's in the news. But I'm just saying, who cares? Like, it, let this lady gripe about nothing, and. Let's move on. Yeah, but like, the thing I, is, is that these five people, the riders have come out with a report being like, oh, we're going to take the lion away from Gaynor. It's like, are you serious? Well, that's like, nothing new. Gaynor gets something taken away like uh, every year. Remember when Gaynor could ride around the end zone or ride around the stadium in a car in the back of the truck? Uh, and then he couldn't. He's, and been removed, all of a sudden, he's, been, he's been removed from actual stadiums. <laughs> yeah, all of a sudden yeah. he can't go behind the, the yeah. uh, opposite team's bench. Like... I don't know. It's been happening just, forever. It's a continual trend, though, because uh, Gainer also got a redesign this year. They launched a new uh, mascot uniform, which caught some flack at the beginning of the year. So, I mean, this ties into, as far as Gainer is concerned, uh, all publicity is good publicity, even if it's yeah, some lady know, giving you flack about beating up a stuffed animal. But, like, hey, I mean, he's making the news, especially on a redesigned look. I mean, that's that's a win. For if all we know, the Rogers PR, PR team set it, set this all up and thought it would be a great way to get the Saskatchewan people back on the side of Gainer. It's kind of coincidental timing, if you ask me. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know. This lady just seemed like a total nut job. Um, yeah. That's fair. The, the internet is full of those. But yeah, here we it are is. talking about it. Yeah, and I just think it's stupid. Like five people complain, and we have to take the stuffed animal away just to appease five people. But uh, that's the society we live in now, so... The squeaky I... wheel gets the grease. Yep. Yep. It's, uh, that's true, Harry. And I'm ready to stop talking about it, but I had to get it off my chest because I thought it was the stupidest thing I've ever heard to see it on, like, four different news outlets. Yeah. You, you've heard be, it be... here first. Squib yeah. Kick Radio supports the beating of stuffed animals. Yeah, don't I'll at, beat up a stuffed animal. Don't at us. Don't I'm... at us. For the record, I'm staying neutral. Classic. I'm saying neutral. Harry is neutral. Yeah, okay. I, don't, I don't need these political games in the back of my mind. Just, <laughs> All right. You know what? Everyone, can, right. everyone let's can move just on. Be a let's move on. Today. Let's move on. 
Um, and with that, we're actually done with the CFL entirely. That's it. That's it for the news. Uh, we're going to circle back up a little bit later, do some picks. But for now, that's it. That's all. See you later, CFL. Uh, NFL. Yeah. <laughs> we have Yay. NFL news. Um, well, first thing I have here, Riley, is something about your Falcons. So, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to I'm not going to steal your thunder there. So, yeah, well, take it away. it's been a great day or two for Falcons fans already. They signed E lineman Michael Bennett, breaks his ankle first day of camp. Defensive back JJ Wilcox, torn ACL first day of camp. Uh, so basically par for the course for the Falcons defense. They lost their middle linebacker in both safeties within the first two weeks last year. And uh, looks like they're just continuing the trend. This might be the most unlucky defense of all time. Uh, I can't remember a time where there wasn't three or four starting defensive players that were key contributors to this defense not getting hurt every season, like for like the past three or four seasons. And uh, it's pissing me off, Eli. It's pissing me off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're catching a tough break, but I mean, what can you do really? Nothing. I mean, yeah. Matty Ice has a unreal season last year. Julio Jones picks it up in the back half. Devontae Freeman hopefully stays healthy this year, and Kelvin Ridley's in his second year, so he should take another step. That offense is going to be really good, but if the defense has given up 34 points a game, it's not going to work out for them. Yeah, yeah, the defense was quite suspect last year, but, I mean, if they can stop the bleeding on their defensive injuries right now, they could bounce back, but, yeah, not a great start. Nope, not happy. Um, we have some players that are on the pup list to start of note, JJ Watt and DeAndre Hopkins. Yeah, just, uh, some minor injuries for those two. Um, Hopkins shouldn't be out long. JJ shouldn't be out long. I believe they both had a little bit of off season surgery. Um, but I got asked the question with JJ Watts injury history. Is this concerning to you guys already? Is the fact that he's on the pup list to start the season? No. I don't know no, about you, Harry. I'm not going to speak no, for you. Yeah, I this agree. is like no, it's not. This is blending into the time where it's like they're getting a little bit more time off camp. You know. Yeah. You look yeah. at it on paper; it's their best offense and their best defensive player who who you're you have said has have had injury history. They're just giving them more time off. That's the that's the only thing I see there. Yeah. They need yeah. it. They don't need to prove themselves anymore. They they've done it. Yeah. If this is still a thing in a month. Then I would be concerned. Yeah. But as of right now, yeah, no, it's... And you see this all the time. There's tons of people that start this... Like, Tom Brady started it on on the pup list yeah. last year, I'm pretty sure. So, like, yeah. Wouldn't be Fair concerned enough. if you are a Houston Texans fan. Um, big signing out of the Cincinnati Bengals organization. Tyler Boyd signs a four-year, $43 million extension to remain with the Bengals. And it begs the question, are they looking to replace A.J. Green? Um, Well, I mean, everyone gets old eventually, right? Um, Harry's been a big fan of A.J. Green. I think he's helped Harry win a couple championships. Yeah, um, he has. In fantasy. Um, I don't know that he's replacing him, but I think he's kind of just waiting in the wings. He'll be that number two. And uh, hopefully when A.J. retires or if he takes a step back, Tyler Boyd can kind of just step right into that role. But... I'm not sure that he's really proved a whole bunch to get a huge contract, but I mean, 43 mil over four years isn't crazy for receivers. We'll uh, we'll see where he's at when uh, that contract wraps up. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I don't know. They got a, they gave it to him to keep him in the building. I think. I agree. I, I don't think they can move on from AJ Green until they're ready to move on from Andy Dalton. Yeah. They've been AJ and Andy have been together since like day one. I mean, is Andy Dalton that great of a quarterback? He's not awful. He's a very sub. Andy Dalton. Guy. Andy Dalton is the epitome of a middle tier mediocre quarterback. He is literally yeah. he is literally the middle line. If you're a bit better than Andy Dalton, you're a good quarterback. You're if above you're, average. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> yeah. exactly. If you're not as good as Andy Dalton, you are a pretty shitty quarterback. So yeah. <laughs> Andy, Andy Dalton is literally the middle ground. So, I mean, yeah, take, I don't know, take that as you will. Yeah. Uh, does Tyler Boyd take a fantasy step? Is he worth a mid-round look? 
Uh, to me, no. Uh, yeah. To me, I, I no. Know. I I was pretty on the Bengals last year having Mixon and AJ Green, and I didn't feel good about it all year. So I'd be pretty hesitant to hop back on the Bengals bandwagon right now. Yeah. Away. Fair enough. Um, yep. I just want to slide something in here for you, Eli. All Your right. boy uh, linebacker Bobby Wagner is expected to show up at camp, even though he's kind of hoping to get a new deal. Um, there's There was thought that maybe he'd hold out, but uh, apparently he wants to be a leader no matter what happens with the contract. So he will be at camp, but he won't be putting himself in harm's way. That's in quotation marks. So he'll probably take it easy, but he wants to be there to be a leader. So that's a... Uh, a nice look for Wagner and the Seahawks. They need him there this season. Yeah, if he held out, that would have been a tough look for them and their organization. Um, but, yeah, I don't know. That's good news. Big fan of that. He's 99 overall in Madden, so yep. right, on, right on. Not like, he, <laughs> not like he's a bad player. Nope, um, that's true. But, yeah, there's got to be... They'll, prob- they'll, they'll give him the contract that he needs as he is one of the top-tier middle linebackers in the NFL. And I wouldn't, again, we've, when it comes to these contract talks and holding out and discussions, we, we mention behind closed doors a lot. Um, and especially within Seattle, I think there's some discussions around with uh, their GM about we're going to get this done, but we need you to not blow this to the media. Yeah. We need you to like be a responsible football player and not demand a holdout like every other Seattle player in the last three years. So, a bit of a culture thing there. So, I think there's some discussions behind closed doors. Um, Speaking about holdouts, Melvin Gordon and the Chargers not looking like they're going to come to a deal. Yeah, that's that's tough for fantasy keeper owners everywhere who probably got Melvin Gordon in like the third round or so Um, last year. He's probably going to hold out. He wants Lev money. I think third round's a stretch. I'm just going to correct you there. Well, br- uh, sorry, Brandon in our league got him in the third last or two years ago. And just for so, reference, uh, let's let's just point out that Brandon also took Jarek McKinnon in the first round. First round after, after knowing he was injured no, for the whole year. No, we found out like half an hour after. Oh, okay. Well, it was well, released. That's, that's no, a little, it was that's released. That's a little bit better, but still. Sorry to out you, Brandon, but it was released. We just were literally in the middle of a draft, and yeah. none of us saw. Yeah, so, that's, that's unfortunately, um, but <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, Melvin isn't going to get a contract. I wasn't thinking he was going to. I've been saying this the whole time. Yeah, is as, as far as him holding out, uh, I don't know if he's going to. He might hold out a camp, but he'll he'll suit up. Austin Eckler, does his value get boosted a little bit with this news? No, oh, yeah. I think I don't know. I think Austin Eckler is where he is always going to be. You're, if you're drafting him, it's to handcuff the person with Melvin Gordon. Yeah. Even if Melvin is holding out, that handcuff position is not going to change. Like, you're not drafting him in the top five rounds. You're drafting him as a handcuff, so look for him to remain yeah, as that or handcuff. Just, or you're just, you're just hoping in, like, the late eighth, ninth round that if you yeah. need a running back on your team, he's worth the pickup to hopefully take over at least a few games. Yeah, that's well, what we call Hail Mary for sure. Well, Melvin. Well, some, sometimes that's all you got to hold on to. Like, let's yep, be real. Definitely. Definitely. Um, all right. Well, yeah. that, is the, that is the news. Good news from the NFL. Yep. I'm just going to say news. one thing. I'm going to also say Hunter Henry is going to come back and have a huge year with the Chargers. He's been injured like two years in a row. But if they don't have Gordon, they're going to have to force him the ball. And, like, as long as he doesn't go through Caleros syndrome and get injured in the first game, like, yeah. it could be worth it. Yeah, that's true. Until they rush six against Phillip and he literally can't go anywhere, which was the P- Patriots painfully exploited in that playoff game. So, I don't know. I That's something you can look if you're a Chargers fan. Probably be a little bit worried about, too, is... Defenses are going to bring the heat against Phillip because he does not handle the rush well. But yeah. that is a discussion for another time, and that was the news. So let's uh, let's go through our picks here, quick, Riley. Let's All see right. what we let's see how we did. 
Well, I went uh, three and one straight up last week, two and two against the spread. I'm now sixteen and seven straight up on the season. Pretty good, pretty good. Fourteen and nine against the spread. Uh, Montreal broke my perfect straight up week last week, but uh, I'm pretty okay with that because, like I said, I'm just kind of happy that they're relevant again. Um, this week we got a big one. I believe you took. No, you didn't take Montreal, but no. Harry, we gave Harry a shout out about taking Montreal the week before last week. That is That's correct. what it was. All right. Um, yeah, I think you said that you were pretty just on par with my picks last yep. week. So we yep. both went 3-1. Yep. Um, this week, we got Calgary at Ottawa Thursday at 7 Eastern time. The Stamps come in 3-2, and two, Ottawa 2-3. Two and three. Um, Stamps will probably want to have a bit better of a game this week. They didn't play Toronto as good as they could have offensively. Um, I expect them to dominate on the defensive side against Jonathan Jennings, though. Their defense had seven turnovers last week. They have 12 interceptions already this year as a defense. The next best is Winnipeg with eight. So uh, that defensive back core for Calgary is sick. Um, and Jonathan Jennings only scored one point against Winnipeg last week. So unless he took some magic, be good at quarterback juice, I see Calgary winning this one, and I'll take them at minus five. All right. I'm look, I'm just looking at some of your lines here, Riley, and I might put some money down this week. These are some pretty tasty I, lines. Yeah, I, I like so I like some of them this week. That's for sure. Yeah. All right. Um, continue. I just yeah. wanted to say that. So listen so, up, listeners. Yeah, we got a double header on Thursday. So nine thirty Eastern. Toronto's at Edmonton. Toronto winless. Edmonton lost to Montreal last week. Uh, the Argos moved the ball against Calgary sometimes, but then they just make that mistake. They'd fumble the ball. I mean, James Wilder fumbled. He doesn't do that very often. Um, in key, key times, too. I mean, when they're close, they just turned the ball over, and it was ugly. Um, so no consistency there against Calgary. They play Edmonton, who likes to pressure the quarterback. Um, Edmonton lost to Montreal, like I mentioned, so they're going to want to have a big bounce-back game to prove that they are one of the top-tier teams in the CFL I see Edmonton winning this one. I see Edmonton winning it big at home. I'll take them minus 12. That's a you big stuttered. number. You stuttered there, Riley. You stuttered. It's, Is this an upside uh, game? Are well, I mean, I took, I took Calgary minus 12 against Toronto last week, and they only won by 10, so that kind of hurt. But uh, I, I'm going to take Edmonton minus 12 here. I just think that Trevor Harris has a way better game with that offense. And... Uh, Toronto's defense just isn't very good, so I think Edmonton's going to put up a crooked number on Toronto. All right. Uh, Friday, game of the week. Got to be game of the week. 5-0 and Winnipeg Blue Bombers at 4-1 Hamilton Tiger Cats. The two best records in the CFL. The Bombers, they're good at football, Eli, like you mentioned. Uh, they're great on defense. M- Matt Nichols has thrown 12 touchdowns and only one interception. Andrew Harris is playing out of his mind. Lucky Whitehead's playing really good. Nick Dembski's a little banged up. He's playing really good. And their defense just chokes teams out. Adam Big Hill might be back this week. Not 100% sure yet. Um, Hamilton's a good football team, but the way this Winnipeg team is playing, I just don't see their first loss coming this week. And I'm going to take them at minus 2.5. A A really nice line there for Winnipeg right now. you got to hop on that right away. Yep, definitely I'll be jumping on that. And then we got the rematch on Saturday. The Durs, big game last week. Cody Fajardo played really well last week. Um, The Riders' defense pressured Mike Riley really good. I mean, three sacks just from Charleston Hughes alone. Um, They moved the ball really well, balanced run and pass attack. Shaq Evans made some big catches for Fajardo when he needed to. Kieran Moore spread the field out. Special teams played good. This Ryder team just played an all-around good game, and I expect them to do the same in BC this week. I'll take the Riders at minus three with no doubt in my mind. Yeah, I uh, I agree. I'm going to be putting some money. Money, ah, yeah, I don't know. I just, the one I'm kind of worried about is the Edmonton game. Because they lost last week, they could be facing some turmoil. Yeah, well... You never really know, but... Honestly, if I wasn't betting every game just for my own pers- personal pleasure and uh, just to see how good I do this year, I probably wouldn't put any money down on that game. But the other three, I have no problem taking the the uh, favorite. Yeah, that Winnipeg at uh, minus two and a half is juicy. Yeah. 
And even, like, I just don't see Jonathan Jennings putting up points. Uh, Calgary minus five, it just seems like a lock for me. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. All right. But, uh, well, yeah, that's that's what I got. Any uh, any disagreements this week, boys? Yeah. Harry, do you have any discrepancies? Yeah, I'm taking Ottawa. <laughs> I thought you were going to go Toronto, uh, if no, anything. No, no, I was thinking Your about them. Ottawa. They, they, they've been trying their best every week, and I'll give them that, but it's just not enough for me anymore. Just, are you taking, are you taking Ottawa to win or Ottawa plus five? Oh, good question. No, Ottawa's minus five. Take Ottawa. Even if they lose by two, I win. Yeah, so that's yeah, Ottawa that's plus what I'm five. Saying. Yeah, are you Ottawa taking, plus five. Are you taking them to win outright? Well, or are you just taking the, the points? Spread. Wow, yeah. this is this is getting more complex as we go <laughs> here. Um, like, I take them not losing. No, I'll take them winning. Like, nice. honestly, uh, Calgary. Oh, I like wow. it. Wow. Just Armbuckle, okay. whatever okay. his name is. I'm over it. <laughs> Armbuckle. <laughs> All right, Harry. Oh, Harry's man. got Harry's got Ottawa on the upset. Yeah. Um, no, I like it. Hmm. I don't know. Like, I want to pick an upset just for, like, the spiciness of it, but I just don't think I can do it. Yeah. There's some tough ones. Yeah. 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 I don't you miss know. 100% of the shots you don't take. Said. And, I mean, Harry was same. the one who called Michael that Scott. that uh, first Montreal win. Yeah. <laughs> Although I did, I did give the win to Toronto in that week as well because you know yeah. I I did think they were trying their best and eventually they did try really hard. They're gonna have, it's gonna pay off for them one day, but <laughs> I I'm losing faith on what that day will be. So, well, will Harry's bets buckle at the hands of Armbuckle? Find out <laughs> next week on Squid Game right. Radio. Armbuckle's got nothing. Uh, uh, I love for it. For those that aren't well versed, that's Calgary's quarterback. Um. All right, well, that's it for the picks. Um, next week, we are finally getting into fantasy football. It's that time of year again. I'm sure, I'm sure some of you diehards have probably already done a mock draft. A um, little early for those, if you ask me, but we're still going to get into it anyways. We're going to break down a bunch of positions. Um, I'm actually just reading this now for the first time. We're going to do top 10 players in each position. Uh, we're going to give some sleepers. I'm really excited for the sleepers set uh, section here just because I think there's a super awesome draft this year. There's some awesome talent at receiver and a bit sprinkled in at running back. I think it well, it was a super receiver heavy draft. Yeah. So. Definitely some late guys, like the, someone that could be like a Calvin Ridley of last year, so a, a late guy that you can you can plug and play or even trade to get some get some nice return on. So look for that in the coming week, starting next week. And with that, we're, we're, think, we're starting with quarterbacks next week. Are we? That's what we're doing. Yeah, yeah. yeah Eli's favorite position. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, all right. Well, with that. Thank you for listening as always. Check us out on the social medias at Squib Kick Radio. And we will talk to you next week. Peace. I got you stuck off the rail. The, the realness. Think not. The shit's too hot. Walking on the surface of the sun, the sun, the sun, the sun.